Dear Professor Heunigen Hühne, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you on a beautiful day at a nice site which bears uh, an important name. The day really is beautiful, but we have no air condition in this room. And the first thing I would like to do, asking the ladies if it is possible that the men get rid of their jackets in order to ease their lives. <laughs> is this okay for you? Thank you so much. <laughs> Still warm. <laughs> well, for me, as president of Leibniz Universität Hannover, and as a person having worked together with Paul Heunig and Hühne on many occasions, it is a great pleasure for me to open this symposium. The pleasure of honoring his contributions to philosophy of science and to the institutional success of this field at Leibniz Universität is unadulterated. However, from a personal point of view, it is certainly mixed with a touch of melancholy. For this is, after all, as it was said, a farewell symposium. And speaking to a farewell symposium, of course, reminds me that uh, in only a couple of months, it will be my own farewell. <laughs> so this is some melancholy. But the fact that this event is, from an institutional point of view, not tainted by overwhelming fretfulness about what lies ahead is another point to Paul Heunigen Hühne's great merit. During the 17 years of his tenure at this university, he has devoted a great part of his energy and his skills, and both are quite considerable resources of him, to institution building and to the task of putting Leibniz Universität on the map of internationally recognized strongholds of philosophy, philosophy of science. Professor Honigen Hühne arrived at Hanover in mid-career in 1997. He had already gained international recognition, in particular through his work on the philosophy of Thomas Kuhn, and established himself as a scholar whose expertise in general philosophy of science was widely appreciated. This was made abundantly clear when shortly after his re er arrival, he was called by the UNESCO to join the advisory group for the preparation of the 1999 World Conference on Science, as well by the many other honors he was to receive in the following years. In Hanover, his task was to establish a new academic unit whose founding director he became, the Center, complicated word, for philosophy and ethics of science. In German, it is still more complicated, <laughs> which in its early years, op for an engineer, not for a philosopher, of course, which in early years operated independently from the faculties into which our university is divided as an entity separate from the university's philosophy department, immediately accountable only to the president. Well, I'm not really able to explain why that was so, but I suppose that uh, the president at that time had some reasons for that. I have some thoughts about it, but I will not tell you. <laughs> In his new role, Paul Heunigen Hühne brought many gifted young philosophers from Germany and from abroad to this university, some of whom have stayed and some of whom later continued their successful careers elsewhere. He soon also started to establish traditions that enriched the intellectual life of our university and continue to do so these days. The so-called ZEVV Colloquium, a weekly series of philosophical talks by outside speakers, is an established tradition on Tuesday nights and draws an interdisciplinary audience from within and without the university. 
And this year saw the 16th installment of the Leibniz Lectures, a yearly event that has brought Jack von Kim, Ronald Gere, Philip Kitcher, and many other distinguished speakers to Hanover. In due time, it became clear that the new Center for Philosophy and Ethics of Science was internationally highly visible, and that its establishment was a success story from both a scholarly and an institutional perspective. On the other hand, the university's philosophy department had been beset with difficulties for quite a while. The department needed a clear profile, and it needed to be reinvigorated with the spirit of a new start. All this needed to be implemented by a philosopher with experience in building up an institution, and someone who enjoyed the university administration's trust. It was also desirable that this should be a person who, in, tempor in temperamental terms, would not suffer from a lack of confidence or a disposition <laughs> or a disposition to shy away from controversy. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the university administration came to the conclusion that the right person for the job was already here. After Professor Heunigen Hühner was assigned to the task, he proposed the plan according to which the entire philosophy department was to be reestablished with an emphasis on philosophy of science. No surprise. In the following years, his ability to withstand public controversy was put to a test. But finally, the Center for Philosophy and Ethics of Science and the former philosophy department were merged in 2010, resulting in the newly founded Institute of Philosophy, Institute for Philosophy, defined by an emphasis on philosophy of science, just as it was proposed in Heunigen Hühner's original plan. This sounds clear and easy. As I remember, it was not. And I still remember that a large bunch of letters and resolutions from many renowned philosophers and many institutions came onto my desk. They told me that this would be the end of philosophy in Hanover, and maybe also the end of philosophy in Germany, or of <laughs> philosophy at all. <laughs> but we felt that this was the right decision, and we really did not change it, and it was good. Meanwhile, the process of filling all professorships with newly hired philosophers has concluded. The arrival of Uljana Feist this March, finally making the new institute complete for the duration of an entire semester. <laughs> Paul Honigen Hühner's philosophy continues to exert its influence, as witnessed by his new book, Systemacity. The Nature of Science, which was only last year published by Oxford University Press. But I trust that Marcel Weber will have more to say on his scholarly accomplishments later. From an institutional perspective, I can confidently say that by establishing philosophy of science as one of this university's particular strengths, is, Paul Honigen Hühner has left a mark. He has started a tradition that will continue not only to shape this university's intellectual life, but also to have its effects on the field of philosophy of science worldwide for years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to wish you all an enjoyable afternoon of philosoph philosophizing in the heat of this day in honor of the lasting influence of Paul Heunigen Hühne. Thank you for your attention.